So the message tonight will be called The Blessing of Moses on the Tribes of Israel. So you know God, He called out a people back in the days of Abram. He needed a people that could follow Him, could hear His voice. He needed to find a people that He could draw back to Him. And so He found a man, Abram, that would respond when his spirit moved, when he spoke, Abram would listen, Abram would obey. He was a man that would commune with God and speak with God. And God called him his friend and he communed with him and walked with him here upon this earth. And the day came in the land of Canaan that God spoke to Abram and he said, Lift up your eyes and look from the place where you now stand, north, south, east, west. He said, All this land will I give to you and to your seed forever. And later, Melchizedek made Abram, and he said, Thou art blessed of the Most High God, the one that possesses heaven and earth. So Abram was a blessed man. He was a man that God commanded a blessing upon, and he said, I'm going to make you a blessing in this earth. And now, saints of God, we are the seed of Abraham through faith in Jesus Christ and all the promises that he made to Abram when he said, look up, lift up your eyes, look, I give this to you and your seed, that seed with Christ. We are in that seed. We are heirs of God through Jesus Christ. All these blessings and all these promises have come down now through Jesus Christ on us as the children of God, this great inheritance that that God has laid up for His saints. And God spoke to him and He told him that His people were going to go down into the land of Egypt and they were going to sojourn there about 400 years. And this is exactly what happened. They went down into the land of Egypt in the days of Jacob. And they sojourned there for hundreds of years till God raised up to them the deliverer Moses. Now Jacob before his death blessed the tribes of Israel. And Moses also, after he had led them out, after he had commanded them, after he had brought the oracles from Sinai, also before Moses departed the earth, he blessed the children of God in the earth. And in Deuteronomy 33 it says, and this is the blessing, wherewith Moses the man of God blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and He came with ten thousands of saints, and from His right hand went a fiery law for them. So he said, this is how the children were redeemed. Their mighty God shined from mountaintop to mountaintop as he led forth his people out of bondage and into the glorious liberty that he had for his children as he led them into the wilderness and as he led them toward the place where he was going to reveal to them his word. That was a wilderness of preparation for the children of Israel where they could receive the living oracles, where they could receive the word of the Lord and through the Word of God could be raised up as an army in the hands of God. It says He shined forth with ten thousands of His saints, and from His right hand went a fiery law for Him. When you go back and read in Exodus 12:37, it says the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth, about 600,000 of them on foot that were men beside children, and a mixed multitude also went up with them. Just think of it. Jacob went in about 70 souls and they came out of the land of Egypt in the days of Moses. Over 600,000 people. He says he came forth with 10,000 of his saints. A great multitude of redeemed people who went through the sea. They were in a type covered by the blood of the Lamb. They went through the sea in a type. They were baptized unto Moses in the 
cloud and in the sea. The cloud led them by day. The fire led them by night. They were a redeemed people. Over 600,000 of them walked out of Egypt, out of bondage, out of slavery that day and into the promised land. And what happened in the wilderness? What happened in the place that was to be their place of preparation? Their place of receiving the Word? Their place of getting strong in the Lord to get ready to go into the land? Their place of getting their faith built up in the Word? It says in Jude, they said, I'll put you in mind, though you once knew this, that God, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Every one of them from 20 years old and upward that grumbled against the Word of the Lord in those days perished in the wilderness. Think of it out of 600,000 people. How many of that generation really ever entered in? Just a handful. Just a few that we know of that even held on to their salvation through that time. Aaron, Moses, Joshua, Caleb. There's a few men recorded out of the ten thousands of saints that went out of the land. Out of the ten thousands that were redeemed, there was a few of that generation that made it in, but just a very few. And that's why Jesus, when He came to the earth, He said, few there are that be saved. In comparison to the multitudes of the earth out here, very few men men have ever been saved. A very small handful. And out of all the people that have ever been redeemed, saints of God, how many have ever held fast and made it in? How many have held fast and made it into the kingdom? Well, go back and look at what happened in the land of Egypt and you'll see that many and the most of God's children down through the years have been turned aside, have turned back, have gone back into sin. They wanted to go back into Egypt. So they perished in the wilderness. That's a type of going back into sin and that is exactly what has happened to many and most of the Christians. That's why the great revivals that occurred even 10 and 20 years ago, why do you see so few people living for the Lord? Because most of them went back into Egypt, back into sin. That's not God's will for His people. That's not God's best for His people. He has written this Word to us. He has sent us His fiery law from His right hand to guide us in the way so that we would not turn back, so that we would say we are well able to overcome because our God is with us. Let's go up at once and take the land. Let's go up at once and inherit the promises. Let's go up at once and believe God's Word. Our God is with us. And that fiery law that proceeded out of the right hand of God and made a way for them there in the wilderness, if they would have accepted that, that fire would have gone ahead of them and burned their enemies in front of them and put down the ones that God had told them to go in and take the land. But instead they doubted and they held back. And so the hand of God was lifted off of them and they perished there in the wilderness except for a few and except for the children that came up later, that young generation, 20 years and under in the days when they stood at Kadesh ready to go into the land. But praise God, it says, Yea, He loved the people. And they sat down at thy feet, every one shall receive of thy words. Do you see why He called them out? He called them out to receive His Word. He called them out to sit at His feet and hear the voice of the Lord and know what would please Him in the earth. Moses commanded us a law, the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. And down through the years, the law of God, the Word that God has handed down through the prophets, through the apostles, through all that is written in this revelation, it's been the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. It's your right to take this Word. It's your right to inherit the blessings of this Word. It's your right to know this Word and to stand on this Word and to see this Word go into operation in your life. It's the inheritance of the congregation of the children of God. And God was king in Jeshurun when the tribes of Israel were gathered together. When they all were together and they would all pull together, then God was lifted up and the God was the king in the day they marched together. But when they started to pull apart, trouble came. 
And he goes on, he says, Now let Reuben live and not die. Moses begins to bless the tribes. Let Reuben live and not die. That's a good promise for any of God's people down through the years. Let them live and not die. God is not the one that wills for His people to die. God came to give us life and life more abundantly. God is life. He is the giver of life. It's Satan that's out to steal life. It's Satan that's out to steal your hell. It's Satan that's out to take a man to an early grave. Let His people live and not die. Let them live. Let them live in the presence of the Lord. Let them be blessed. Let them prosper. Let them walk in health even as their soul prospers. That's God's will for His people. Let them live and not die. And in this end time, God's people don't have to go the way of the grave because God, His Son, is going to return to this earth and He's going to have people that will be alive and remain under the coming of the Lord. You can live live, no matter how many armies are gathered around you, no matter how many circumstances are piled against you, no matter how many attacks of the devil, remember God said this blessing to His people, let them live and not die. You can stand on that. You can hold fast to it. You can raise up your hand to God and say, I'm going to live. I'm going to live because you are the author of life. You are the life giver. I am in Thy hands, O Lord. I will walk under the the shadow of thy divine spirit in which is the spirit of life in Jesus Christ. I will walk under the shadow of that and live all my days upon this earth with a joy in my heart, with a spring in my step, knowing no weapon formed against me will prosper. No counsel taken against me will stand. No sickness, no disease, no plague, no calamity. It says, let Reuben live and not die. It says, hear the Lord, the voice of Judah. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and be thou a help from his enemies. Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. Now, Judah was the one the genealogy was to go through. He was the one. Jesus would come and be the lion of the tribe of Judah. It was through Judah the blessing of the genealogy went. He said, Lord, hear the voice of Judah. Let his hands be sufficient for him. And this is God's will for each one of His children that they would get to that place in God where they can stand alone no matter what the devil throws against them. That they will not be drawn back into sin. That they will not be drawn back into confusion. That if something comes their way, they can take the promises of God and lay their hands upon their heads or upon the heads of their children and pray the prayer of faith and see the devil flee. That they were own the, the works of their own hands would be sufficient for him. It says your own works can praise thee. The life that you have carved out by obeying God, by living this word, saints of God, it can be sufficient for you. This life that you've carved out in God as you put your hands in His hands, as you've used your hands for His glory, it can be so sufficient for you that your works will go ahead and make a way for you in this end time that you may live and not die a way through the the perils of this end time, away through the snares and traps of the devil, away through the power of sin that is drawing man, drawing man every which way in the days we're living in. Sin is the strongest it's ever been on the earth in the day we're living in now and it's getting stronger. It's a stronger power of sin upon the earth than in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah right now, right in this country. And it's drawing up man all the time, pulling him back. Well, we can cut through that in the name of the Lord. We we can raise up our hands against that in the name of the Lord and say, Oh my God, Thou art sufficient for thee, me, and I believe Thy Word, and that will be sufficient. That is the work of your hand. When you lift your hands up to God and say, I believe Thy Word, Thy Word is true, O oh God, and cut through this darkness of sin, cut through this darkness of sickness, cut through this darkness of the world that's drawing against man at all times. God's people, they need to get strong so they can withstand an evil day and having done all this stand and their own work. Saints, it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. There isn't always going to be a brother or sister around to pray for you in a time of need. You're going to need to get your life in order before God to be standing on the Word. So no matter what storms, what winds may blow, you can stand like a rock against it. And of Levi he said, Let thy Thummim and thy Urim be with thy Holy One, 
They shall teach Jacob thy judgments and Israel thy law. They shall put incense before thee and whole burnt sacrifice upon thy altar. He said of the tribe of Levi, the priesthood. He said they will teach Jacob the judgments, Israel the law. They would be the ones that would lay incense before God upon the altar and burnt sacrifice upon the altar. Well, Jesus came and He made us kings and priests to God. We are a royal priesthood showing forth the praises of God, offering up the incense before God of a holy life, of a praise to God. When you walk through this earth and your ways are pleasing to God, it sends up a fresh fragrance in the supernatural realm and God smells the sweet savor of that and God looks down upon you for good. It says of Levi, Numbers 3, this whole chapter, you can go read it sometime, it talks how the firstborn of Israel are the Lord's. For on the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast, Mine they shall be. I am the Lord. So God said in the day that He brought him out of Egypt and He smote the firstborn of Egypt, all the firstborn of Israel became the property of the Lord. They became the Lord's. He, they were to serve God at all times. But He said, what I'm going to do amongst you, He said, I'm going to call out the tribe of Levi. And instead of taking the firstborn that comes from each womb, He said, I'm going to take Levi instead of the firstborn. So He told him to go through the tribes and number all the males from one month old and upward. And then take that number and compare it to the number number of Levites and take the Levites and their cattle instead of the firstborn of Israel and their cattle. So he went through and he counted and there were 22,273 firstborn from a month old upward in the land of Israel. So for every port, and there were not that many Levites in the land of Israel. So for every portion above that, above the number of Levites, up to that total, they would take five shekels, and they would pay that as a redemption for the firstborn. And, is, and Levi then became God's heritage in the land of Israel. They had no inheritance here upon this earth. God was their portion, and they were God's portion among the tribes of Israel. So Levi, the priest, the firstborn, saints, that speaks of us in this end time. We are the church of the firstborn. Do you realize the firstborn of the Lord's and Jesus Christ? He was the firstborn of all creation. He was the Lord's. And now we are the church of the firstborn. And we are kings and priests on this earth. We're God's heritage here upon this earth. Offering up a praise to God here upon this earth. A holy priesthood. We're not not to be defiled in our thinking. We're not to be defiled in our living. We're not to be defiled by man in any way, any pollution of sin in any way here upon this earth at all. We are an holy priesthood. We are the heritage of the Lord because we are the church of the firstborn. We are kings and priests on this earth. And he said to Levi, Thy Thummim and Urim shall be with thy Holy One. Now the Thummim and Urim if you go back to Exodus 28 when God revealed the pattern of the tabernacle and there was a breastplate that would lay upon the high priest and in the breastplate it says in Exodus 28 thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim and they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord and Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel on his heart before the Lord continually. So the Urim and Thummim went into the breastplate and it was continually born and he called it the judgment of the children of Israel. Urim and Thummim mean lights and perfections. The lights and perfections. This was all times upon the heart of the high priest. This was the judgment of the children of Israel. They would be judged according to light and according to perfection. They would be judged according to the light of the Lord that had shined into the earth through His Word and through His Spirit. And they would be judged according to the perfection of God that's in Jesus Christ. And at all times, Jesus is our high priest. And He went up to the throne of God 
God to bear before God at all times the judgment of the children of Israel, the light and perfection that He is calling His people to walk in in this day. God's people are to walk in light, all the light that they know and all the wisdom they have, and they are to walk in, be a perfect person here upon this earth and push for the perfection that's in Jesus Christ, and then they are fulfilling the judgment of the Urim and Thummim. When Moses called out to God when he knew he was going to depart, he cried out to the God of the spirits of all flesh, and he said, give these people a shepherd. Give them somebody to go in and out before them because I'm going to depart. And God said, I will take your spirit and put it upon Joshua. So he said, take thee Joshua and lay your hand upon him, and thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of Israel may be obedient. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask for him after the judgment of Urim before the Lord. The, before Joshua could be set in as a minister of God in that day, he had to stand before Eleazar the priest and before the judgment of the Urim and Thummim, the light and perfection. God judges His people. God judges His ministers according to the judgment of light and perfection. Will they walk in the light? Will they walk in perfection? Will they preach it to His people? This has been the call of God down through the years to every minister God has looked down from the throne and he has judged them according to light and perfection because he was going to bring forth that word through them children of God walk in the light children of God be ye perfect as I am perfect that is the call of God and he's using his ministers to proclaim that so before they can proclaim it they must stand before the judgment of light and perfection and clean up their lives before God so they can proclaim Proclaim it before the people and go in and out before the people and that the Spirit of the Lord may rest upon them and all of God's people are going to be judged according to light and according to perfection. That's why, saints of God, there's no time upon this earth to hold back. There's no time upon this earth to compromise. There's no time upon this earth to live in sin. There's only time to walk in the light. There's only time to push for perfection because that's a great and high calling in God to push into the perfection of Jesus Christ to be perfect as He is perfect and it's going to take all the heart all the soul, all the mind all the strength, a total dedication a total consecration a total selling out to God becoming a whole burnt sacrifice upon the altar of God to leave aside the ways of man to leave aside the traditions of man, to believe aside the sinful way, to leave aside the thoughts of doubt, to leave aside everything of the world and lay your life before God and say, oh my God, make me perfect as you are perfect. Oh my God, fill me with thy light until I'm a vessel of thy light to shine out in the earth. That is what God's people are going to have to do if they're going to stand before the lights and perfection of Jesus Christ in this day. Now Benjamin, he said, the beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him. The Lord will cover him all day long and he'll dwell between his shoulders. The beloved of the Lord is going to dwell in safety. He's going to dwell under the shadow of the Almighty God. God said, because He has set His love upon me in Psalm 91, therefore will I deliver Him. I will set Him on high because He has known my name. When God, when you become the beloved of the Lord, say, how do you do that? It says He's made us acceptable in the beloved. He loved His Son, Jesus Christ. We are made acceptable into Him when we walk in the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Christ and in the steps of Jesus Christ we also are beloved in the sight of God and he comes and overshadows us with his great wings and covers us all the day long we can dwell between his shoulders in a place of total safety in a place of total peace in a place of rest why the whole economy can crash around you the whole way of nature can shake and tremble and fall around you everything that man has looked on is stable and precious and fall around you but 
but you're dwelling on between the shoulders of Jesus Christ. You're dwelling in a place of peace and safety and your peace isn't dependent on anything but your walk with God where you stand in the Spirit of the Lord and you feel such a great love and compassion for mankind and you feel such a great protection all about you that you know that you know that no evil shall befall thee, no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling, a thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it won't come near you. You're between the great shoulders of God, dwelling in safety under His wing. This is the greatest place. It's under the shadow of the Almighty. This is that secret place of God that you enter in through faith in Jesus Christ and through leading a holy life and through the baptism in the Holy Ghost and through the believing of the Word of God. You enter in deeper and deeper into that ark of safety, deeper and deeper into a place where you are shadowed by the Spirit of God. The deeper you go into God, the less evil can penetrate, the less of the works of darkness can penetrate in until finally you come to that place at the center of God's will where no darkness can penetrate at all, no sin can penetrate at all, where your mind is totally aligned with the mind of God and you see no doubt, you think no doubt, no fear, nothing can penetrate this mind save the Word of the Lord and that's the place that God has laid out in His Word. That's the land of promise He's laid out in His Word and promised us that we're to go out and inherit, that we're to go out and take, that we're to go out and walk in. Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out and Issachar in your tents. They shall call the people to the mountain and there they'll offer the sacrifice of righteousness. God's people are going to call all the body of Christ to the mountains, to the high points of God, and offer the sacrifice of righteousness. Too long, too long have they called God's people to compromise. Have they called God's people to live a low life? Have they called God's people to accept the evil of this world as something inevitable in their lives? God's going to have a Zebulun. God's going to have an Issachar people in this end time that are going to say, no, I reject that life. I reject that low level life. I reject that life of doubt. I reject that life of defeat because God's word shows me a life of victory. God's word shows me a better way. God's word shows me a better life. I accept that. I believe that. Come on up to the mountains. Come on up to the high point. Come on up above the darkness of this world. Come up above the defeat of this world. Offer up a sacrifice of righteousness to God. High on the mountains of Zion. High on the mountains of God. Hallelujah saints of God. Offer it up in the name of thy Lord thy God. Offer it up in holiness. Offer it up in righteousness. Offer it up in truth. For thy God his eyes are upon his people this night. He knows the hearts of his people this night. He sees where they stand this night. And his call is upward in God. His call is upward in God. Come up higher this night. Come up higher this night. Believe more God's word this night. And see more light upon the word this night. Come on up to higher ground. Hallelujah. Praise God we're going to call him up higher. Call him up higher. Proclaim it out. How beautiful are the feet of those who stand on the mountaintop spreading the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. Every problem better bow. Every force of darkness better bow. Every power of sin better bow. Because Jesus Christ is Lord. He's seated on the mountains of Zion and He's calling us up to His side. Up to His side. Always upward, saints of God. Gad dwells as a lion, Dan is a lion's whelp. God has called us to be children of that great lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. When the devil roars against us with his doubts and temptations, we're to roar back with the Word of God. We're to roar back with the great power of the Word. We're to speak it back. Get thee behind me, Satan. It is written, Satan, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not turn to the right or the left. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. It is written in the Word. I will not stray off of that course. I'm a lion's well. When you come roaring against me with your temptations, with your trials and tests, watch out. I'm going to open my mouth in the name of the Lord my God. And His voice is going to echo out through His Word and turn you around and put you to flight because the lion of the tribe of Judah lives in us. Oh, Naphtali, full with the blessing of the Lord. 
full with the blessing of the Lord. That's what God wants for all His people. Full of the blessing of the Lord. All the fatness, all the goodness, all the dew of heaven, all the glory of God to fill His people. We're earthen vessels made, made in the image of God, made to contain the glory of God. Man wasn't made to sin. Man wasn't made to walk in darkness. Man wasn't made to be beaten down by evil. Man is a vessel. He is a great vessel that can contain the image of God that can contain the glory of God and God says be filled up with the blessing of the Lord be filled up with thy God from head to foot from foot to head through thy fingers through thy hands through thy feet through thy knees through thy head through thy mind every part of thee totally filled with the blessing of God through the spirit of the Holy Ghost that lives within you thanks to God you can feast on the rock you can get so full of God you can get so full of God God, you can feel Him coming out. You can feel Him radiating out of you. The great love, the great power telling you no, it's going out of you. You can feel it's like your hands, like your feet, like they begin to expand. They can't contain that glory. And someday, saints of God, they are going to be able to contain the great glory that's going to live in God's people and we're going to burst forth into a new body. We're going to burst forth into a new creation. Something that can hold all the glory that God wants to pour into us. Let Asher be blessed with children. Let him dip his foot in oil. And as thy days, so shall thy strength be. Caleb, after those years of wandering, he said, I'm as strong for war this day as I was in the days before we began this journey in the wilderness. He said, I'm going to go up and I'm going to take that mountain of giants and I'm going to live on the mountaintop. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. As you grow older in the Lord, that doesn't mean your strength in God needs to sap. He said he'd renew your youth like the eagle. You can push hard. You can push hard against this stuff. In, in the name of your God push against all that comes and tries to oppress man as he goes on in years it tries to draw him down and bend him over and cause afflictions to come upon him but God's word says this blessing shall be upon his people as thy days so shall thy strength be and now now in the days when you're youth when you're young let your strength be full let it be strong and every day you live upon the earth let your strength in God grow and grow and the glory of God come forth more and more. Be a strong power for God. Now, says, serve thy Creator in the days of thy youth. Serve thy Creator in the days when there is time, when there is still time upon the earth. And serve thy God on throughout thy days. We have been blessed, many of us, to come into the kingdom at a young age. At a young age, when we still have a life laid out before us. We still have a lifetime ahead of us that we can and serve our God till the days He comes again and every day with Jesus can be better than the day before. Joseph, blessed to the Lord be His land for the precious things of heaven, for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, for the precious things put forth by the moon, for the chief things of the ancient mountains, for the precious things of the lasting hills, for the precious things of the earth, and for the good will of him that dwelled in the bush, let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph, the head of him that was separated from his brethren. All the precious things of God were to come upon the head of Joseph. God has great treasures. God has hidden mysteries yet to be revealed. God has great treasures of wisdom and great gems of knowledge in this life. Not something that will puff you up and make you feel like you're above somebody else or something like that. The wisdom that comes from above is first of all pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated. It's never puffed up, never lifted up. But there are great gems of wisdom of how to live this life, how to walk with God, and they're precious in the eyes of God. And He gives them to those that are pushing on. He gives them to those who want to serve Him all the way. He said not to cast your pearl before swine, so He isn't going to give His precious things to those who want to take them back and wallow in the mire of sin, in the mire of man's way, in the mire of this earth. He's going to give them to those who want to get out 
out of the mire and walk on further with God. A wisdom, a wisdom that can be revealed by the Spirit of God to teach you this Word. And you'll look at the Word sometimes and God's Spirit will come upon you and open up some passage of the Word and it'll be so precious. You'll know that God has just given you another reward. God has just given you another little jewel out of His Word. Sometimes your eyes, tears will well up in them because you'll know how precious this is to be taught of God. What a great eternal treasure that God is giving into your hands by revealing His Word, by anointing you and letting you feel the presence of His Spirit. All the precious things of God are ours in Jesus Christ and He is the head of the church. We are His feet. We are His body. We can receive the great precious wisdom that comes from the throne of God. It says, let it be on the head of Joseph, the one that was separated from his brethren. He had many brethren, but Joseph, he got dreams from the Lord. God would come and speak to him. God would come and walk with him. And it says his brothers got so upset by it, they couldn't even speak to him peaceably. They wanted to get rid of him. They wanted to destroy him. They finally sold him into bondage, sold him into slavery. But God was with him wherever. God was wherever he went upon this earth. God was there ready to bless him, ready to get him out of trouble, ready to set him up as the head and not the tail. And finally, God used Joseph, the one his brothers had mocked, the one his brothers had rejected for his revelations from God, for the great love his father had for him. They rejected him for that, and he turned around, and the work he did wrought salvation in Israel. The blessing shall come upon Joseph. Genesis 48.5, this is when Jacob was blessing the sons of Joseph in the land of Egypt, he said. And now, ja now Joseph, Jacob said, Thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon are mine. That day Jacob took Ephraim and Manasseh. He took them and he said, now they're mine. He said, the rest you have will be yours. But Ephraim and Manasseh are mine just as much as Reuben and Simeon are mine. And Jacob blessed them and he set Ephraim, who was the second born, ahead of Manasseh, who was the first born, in his blessing. And Israel then said to Joseph, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren. He got, jo Joseph got from Jacob a double portion. He got a double blessing. He got a double inheritance inheritance in the land of Israel for J Jacob took from him Ephraim and Manasseh and he gave them both an inheritance in Israel and so that was a double blessing Joseph was no longer one now he was two he was Ephraim and Manasseh and the blessing was upon each of them and this is the double portion that is the right of the firstborn it went to Joseph the right of the firstborn to have a double blessing a double portion of inheritance it went down to Joseph Deuteronomy 21.17 it's talking about if a man have two wives one he hate and one he love and the one he hate brings forth his firstborn child it says he shall acknowledge the son of the hated the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he has for he is the beginning of his strength the right of the firstborn is his. The firstborn had a right in Israel. They had a right to a double portion of inheritance. They had a right to a double blessing from their father. Just think of all the good things that were spoken of the firstborn. He said the firstborn are mine. They are the Lord's. A double portion was to be given to the firstborn. And if they were in a right place, a genealogy, they could carry on the inheritance through the firstborn. If their father was the king, then natural right of the throne would pass to the firstborn. They would receive it as an inheritance. So there were many blessings that were to come upon the firstborn. And that's what happened. It came upon Joseph. Except for one thing, he wasn't the firstborn. Reuben was. First Chronicles 5 says, Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn. But for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. And the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. For Judah 
prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler, but the birthright was Joseph's. So you see what happened in the day. This should all have been Reuben's inheritance, but he defiled his father's bed. He didn't lead a holy life, so that very right that he had to have a double blessing of the birthright fell to Joseph. Judah took the genealogy, so from that day on, the genealogy was not to be reckoned according to the birthright, because the genealogy went through Judah, the birthright went through Joseph and where did it pass in Joseph how many times in the word of God how many times is God trying to tell us something where does the birthright pass many and a many and a many time in the word Abraham begat two sons Ishmael was the firstborn Isaac was the secondborn the blessing passed upon Isaac not upon Ishmael because God looks on the heart then Isaac had two children Esau and Jacob Esau came out first Jacob came out second the right of the birthright was Esau but who obtained it it was Jacob the birthright did not go to the one who should have inherited it according to genealogy according to a natural lineage it went to the one whose heart was right before God when the children were born to Jacob and Joseph and Reuben their days came up the birthright did not go to Reuben's whose it was by genealogy whose it was by natural birth it went to Joseph whose heart was right before God God. Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. He, Manasseh was the firstborn. The blessing passed upon the head of Ephraim. He wasn't the firstborn, but it was the one that God chose. And on and on it went like this throughout the history of Israel. David was the youngest son of Jesse, yet he was anointed king. Solomon was not the firstborn, yet he was the one set upon the throne. The birthright did not always go to the firstborn as it should have been through the flesh, but it went to the the one whose heart was right before God, who God looked upon according to the Spirit and said, these are mine. And so it is down through time. Man has claimed a birthright through a natural inheritance. God has looked upon the heart and given the birthright to whom He would. He said, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. He has given it to those who would humble themselves before God and lift up their hands to God and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I believe Your Word. So Judah had the genealogy. He prevailed above his brethren. Joseph had the birthright of the double blessing. And as they worked together in Israel. Israel had the genealogy and the blessing in its midst and Israel could be a strong people when the spies went up in the days of Moses to spy out the land. Who was it that brought back a good report? It was Caleb from the tribe of Judah and Joshua from the tribe of Ephraim. Ephraim was the one through Joseph that the double blessing passed to. The double blessing and the genealogy. They worked together and they brought back a good report for the children of Israel. They were exalted in Israel just according to the word of the Lord that's how it would be and so this went on for a while but then there was a split in Israel Judah it headquartered in Jerusalem and there was a split between it and the tribes of Israel which headquartered in Samaria and Ephraim became the chief of the land of Israel so the one with the double portion he split off from the one with the genealogy and Israel went its way and many times Israel was even called Ephraim in the word and it says in Isaiah 7, in the days when Ahaz was the king of Judah, Pekah was the king of Israel, and Rezin was the king of Syria. It was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. Ephraim went and joined itself to an ungodly nation to attack the land of Judah. And God's prophet stood up and said, Thus saith the Lord, It shall not stand. For the head of Syria is Damascus. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken that it be not a people. He said this counsel of God's people going out and taking counsel with ungodly men and turning around and coming against another group of God's people. He said this will not stand in just three score and five years. Ephraim is going to be broken so that won't even be a people and the Lord will bring upon thee days that have not come from the day Ephraim departed from Judah God said it plainly in his word he said Jeroboam departed out of the house of David he said Ephraim departed out of the house of Judah and what happened what happened when the anointing and the genealogy separated Israel was not blessed it went downhill finally they both went into captivity but Ezekiel the prophet of the Lord stood up one day 
and after he had a great vision of the valley of dry bones, God gave him another vision and he gave him two sticks. He said, take one stick, Ezekiel, and write on it for Judah. Then he said, take the other stick and write on it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim. And he said, take these two sticks and join them together and they will become one stick in your hand. What was that one rod that stood in the hand of Ezekiel that he lifted up before the elders of Israel? What was that rod he lifted up where Judah and Ephraim, where the genealogy and the double and the blessing of the birthright, the blessing of the firstborn joined together? That was the rod of the stem of Jess that was prophesied there in the book of Isaiah. That was the rod of Jesus Christ that joined together Judah and Ephraim. They would no more be divided, but David would rule over them. They would be through Jesus Christ, who was the heir of the Davidic throne through Judah, who had the right of the firstborn. They would be one nation, one king, one shepherd, and observe to do all my statutes and covenants. It says in Colossians 1.15 that Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. You talk about the right of the firstborn. How about the right of the firstborn of every creature? The word that was spoken out through the Spirit of God. The word through which God created all things. His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The firstborn of every creature. Every right of the firstborn found its fulfillment in this one. Who was the firstborn of God's creation? Who was the word brought forth from the Spirit? It says, by Him were all things created in heaven and in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power. It was through the Word of God that God set up every throne, every dominion, every principality and every power. And it says He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. God said His Son, Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to the throne of David, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn of the dead. He was going to have the preeminence in everything. God was going to lift the rod of His Son up high, high over His people and say come together in this name. Come together in the name of Jesus. There is one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one body here upon this earth. Joined together through the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the firstborn of all creation, the heir of all things. You talk about an inheritance Yes, they had an inheritance in Israel and we now have our inheritance in the Son of Israel, Jesus Christ, who is the heir of all things and we're joint heirs with Him. We're the church of the firstborn. We have all the blessings. He was above all things. Saints of God, He was before Judah. He was before Judah. He was before Levi, a greater priesthood than Levi. And even before Abraham was, it says, I am, that in all things He might have the priesthood eminence and now we are found in him joined together as one spirit with the Lord one spirit walking in the steps of Jesus now we have a double portion in Israel through the firstborn who inherited all things we became the joint heirs of all things we have a genealogy in Israel he was raised up king of kings and lord of lords as we stand in him we become to seated at his right hand kings and priests upon this earth do you see that God wants his son to have the preeminence in all things. God found the heart of his son right before him and God bestowed upon him every blessing that ever flowed out of his mouth from the days of Abraham onward. They all fell upon his son Jesus Christ. They were all fulfilled in his son Jesus Christ and when we step into him they are fulfilled in us. Praise our God. What wisdom. Now it goes on. There is none like the God of Jeshurun who rides upon the heaven in your help and in the excellency on the sky. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and say, destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine, and his heavens shall drop down dew. Where is the fountain of Jacob? Saints, it's in us. It's in us. That great one who poured out the rivers of life back there in the Old Testament, who would even bring forth water out of a rock. He lives in us. He flows out of us. Out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. We have the fountain, the day spring from on high, the fountain that gave Jacob all his blessing, the fountain 
mountain that gave Jacob all his blessing, that day spring from on high, now he's in us, bubbling up, welling up in us like springs of living waters, giving thirst, giving, giving drink to the thirsty out here, the ones that want to know the ways of God, they should find it in God's people, they should find a river, a fountain of living water in God's people that they can come to and it can flow out the word of the Lord, the love of God, the spirit of the Lord can flow out and touch the hearts of men and they can come to know the God of Jacob, the God of Israel, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the Lord, the shield of your help, the Lord, the sword of your excellency. Thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread on their high places. Your enemies who come against you, who lie against you, these evil spirits out here in the world, they will be found liars to you. You will find through the Spirit of the Lord that they are lying to you when they offer you their enticements, when they try to beat you down, when they try to afflict you. The sword of thy excellency is thy God. Thy shield is thy God. Thy enemies are liars. Thy God is true. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee. Amen. That's the blessing of Moses that we can have in our lives this very day through the Son of Righteousness, through the firstborn of all creation, through the one who said before Abraham was, I am. He lives in his church this day. Praise God. blessed him. They've tried to destroy God's people down through the years. God blessed them anyway. God brought them through. God gave them the victory while they would cleave to their to their God and he is the same God yesterday today and forever and we have now a better covenant than they had we have better promises than they had we have the Holy Ghost living in us we should be living a more abundant life than they lived back in the Old Testament because our covenant is better our covenant draws us closer it penetrates through the veil right into the Holy of Holies right to the side of our God that's how deep this covenant and the blood of Jesus Christ goes and we are our heirs of that covenant. We are sealed in that covenant. Let's live in it. Let's live in it in the blood covenant of Jesus Christ. Let's lift up our heads high. Let's lift up our hands to our God and say, praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord, for all that you've done. You, you are the great God, the number one, our Savior, our Lord, our Creator, our Rock. Hallelujah. Our safety, our refuge, our healer, our deliverer, our great provider, our exceeding great reward. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of